Welcome back to SRC. It's Science Week. And today we are reading Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. And we'll also be making elephant toothpaste, so stay tuned. Today we'll be doing elephant toothpaste. Let's jump in. If you would like to try elephant toothpaste with adult supervision at home, you're going to need warm water, a bottle, volume 20 hydrogen peroxide. You can find it at any beauty supply store. We got ours at Sally. You're going to need dish soap, yeast, a stir stick, food coloring of your choice, a funnel, a tablespoon, and a small mixing bowl. To start, you're going to want to measure out a half a cup of your volume 20 hydrogen peroxide and carefully pour it into the bottle. Next, add eight drops of your food coloring color of choice into the bottle. Add a tablespoon of dish soap. Now in a small bowl off to the side, measure out three tablespoons of warm water and then a tablespoon of yeast. And mix your yeast for about one minute to activate it. The last step is to add the yeast to the bottle. Now you're gonna wanna do this step really quickly and then move the funnel away right after because the reaction will occur quite fast. Just watch and enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed Elephant Toothpaste. Hey guys, today we are reading Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, pictures by Garth Williams, and published by Harper Collins Publishers. Before breakfast. Where's Papa going with that axe? said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Mrs. Arabo. Some pigs were born last night. I don't see why he needs an axe, continued Fern, who was only eight. Well, said her mother, one of the pigs is a runt. It's very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it. Do away with it? shrieked Fern. You mean kill it, because just because it's smaller than the others. Mrs. Arabelle put a pitcher of cream on the table. Don't yell, Fern, she said. Your father is right. The pig would probably die anyways. Fern pushed a chair out of the way and ran outdoors. The grass was wet and the earth smelled like springtime. Fern's sneakers were sopping by the time she caught up with her father. Please don't kill it, she sobbed. It's unfair. Mr. Arabelle stopped walking. Fern, he said gently, you will have to learn to control yourself. Control myself, yelled Fern. This is a matter of life and death, and you talk about controlling myself? Tears ran down her cheeks, and she took hold of the axe and tried to pull it out of her father's hand. Fern, said Mr. Arambell, I know more about raising a litter of pigs than you do. A weakling makes trouble. Now run along. But it's unfair, cried per Fern. The pig couldn't help being born small, could it? If I had been very small at birth, would you have killed me? Mr. Arambell smiled. Certainly not, he said, looking down at his daughter with love. But this is different. A little girl is one thing. A little runty pig is another. I see no difference, replied Fern, still hanging on to the axe. This is the most terrible case of injustice I have ever heard of. A queer look came up over John Abril's face. He seemed almost ready to cry himself. All right, he said. Just go back to the house and I will bring the runt when I come in. Let you start it on a bottle, like a baby. Then you will see what trouble a pig can be. When Mr. Arambell returned to the house half an hour later, he carried a carton under his arm. Fern was upstairs changing her sneakers. The kitchen table was set for breakfast, and the room smelled of coffee, bacon, damp plaster, and wood smoke from the stove. Put it on her chair, said Mrs. Arambell. Mr. Arambell set the carton down at Fern's place. Then he walked to the sink and washed his hands and dried them off on the roller towel. 
Fern came slowly down the stairs. Her eyes were red from crying. As she approached her chair, the carton wobbled, and there was a scratching noise. Fern looked at her father. Then she lifted the lid of the carton. There inside, looking up at her, was the newborn pig. It was a white one. The morning light shone through its ears, turning them pink. He's yours, said Mrs. Mr. Arambell, saved from an untimely death, and made the good Lord forgive me for this foolishness. Fern couldn't take her eyes off the tiny pig. Oh, she whispered. Oh, look at him. He's absolutely perfect. She closed the carton carefully. First she kissed her father, and then she kissed her mother, and then she opened the lid again, lifted the pig out, and held it against her cheek. At this moment, her brother Avery came into the room. Avery was ten. He was heavily armed, an air rifle in one hand, a wooden dagger in the other. What's that? he demanded. What's Fern got? She's got a guest for breakfast, said Mr. Mrs. Arambell. Wash your hands and face, Avery. Let's see it, said Avery, setting his gun down. You call that miserable thing a pig? That's a fine specimen of a pig, and it's no bigger than a white rat. Wash up and eat your breakfast, Avery, said his mother. The school bus will be along in a half an hour. Can I have a pig too, Pop? asked Avery. No, I only distribute pigs to early risers, said Mr. Arundel. Fern was up at daylight, trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, she now has a pig. A small one, to be sure, but nevertheless, a pig. It shows what can happen if a person gets out of bed promptly. Let's eat. But Fern couldn't eat until her pig had had a drink of milk. Mrs. Arabelle found a baby's nursing bottle and a rubber nipple. She poured warm milk into the bottle and fitted the nipple over the top and handed it to Fern. Give him his breakfast, she said. A minute later, Fern was sitting on the floor in the corner of the kitchen with her infant between her knees, teaching it to suck from the bottle. The pig, although tiny, had a good appetite and caught on quickly. The school bus honked from the road. Run, commanded Mrs. Arambell, taking the pig from Fern and slipping a donut into her hand. A Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. The children ran to the road and climbed into the bus. Fern took no notice of the others in the bus. She just sat and stared out of the window, thinking what a blissful world it was and how lucky she was to have entire charge of a pig. By the time the bus reached school, Fern had named her pet, selecting one of the most beautiful names she could think of. Its name is Wilbur she whispered to herself. She was still thinking about her pig when her teacher said, Fern, what is the capital of Pennsylvania? Wilbur, replied Fern dreamily. The pupils giggled, Fern blushed. If you wanna read the rest of Charlotte's Web, it is available at our library. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in.